All right, what's good, y'all? Look, so in today's video, we finna be doing some Forex live trading. I'm gonna be looking at NAS 100 and US 30 today. Hopefully, we can catch a setup live with y'all. Um, I'm trying a different style of video today where I just sit here and do the whole breakdown, do the whole markup, execute the trade, send it out to my Discord. Everything gonna be done on here. Try not to edit too much of the video because I do want y'all to just be able to see like the candlesticks moving and stuff like that. Um, so before we get into it, though, it's about to be 930, so I'm about to hop on and do my markups right quick. Uh, I know the market about to make some type of move in one minute, but I usually don't take a trade until like 10 o'clock, right? 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, because that's that silver bullet window, and that's what I usually like to try to get on NAS 100 or US 30. So I'm gonna do a markup on both pairs. We got news coming out at 945. So I'm not gonna be taking a bond open trade. Sometimes I will take a trade right at 930, but I'm not gonna do that today because we got news coming out in 15 minutes. So I wanna see how that news affect like that later New York session. But before we get into it though, if you wanna get in the Discord, come in here and take signals, uh, learn from other people in the group. We 200 plus members deep in the Discord. So if you wanna get around some other traders, join the Discord. Since I haven't posted no video in about a month, I have made the Discord a one-time purchase right now for like the next week. So if anybody wanna get in for a one-time purchase without having to like pay monthly, you could do so right now for the next week and you will have lifetime access to the Discord for only $99. All right, so let's get into the markups though. So usually what I do is I start on the monthly, right? I'm gonna show y'all everything I do going from top to bottom. All right, so as you can see, what we are gonna do is we in a new month, right? So usually what I like to do at the beginning of the new month is I'll mark off the old previous month high, right? So this is our previous month high right here. As you can see, we're gonna put that as PMH. And then we're gonna go down to the low of that previous month as well and just put a little line right there to let us know that that's our previous month low, right? We ain't gonna do too much time on the monthly chart. Um, We're gonna go down to the weekly after that and we're gonna do this for both pairs, US 30 and NAS 100. So I'm starting off on NAS 100. And then what I usually do is I'll clean up my charts, you know what I'm saying, going down each time frame. So now what I want to do is I want to mark off the previous week low. As you can see, the previous month high and the previous week high is like right there next to each other. So I'm not going to put all, I'm not going to put a line right there for the previous week high just because it's going to confuse me, right? I would expect this to be the overall drawn liquidity, which is the previous month high. So I would not put a line right here on the previous week high. Leave that alone. Go down here. As you can see, we're going to put previous week low. And this is a good area to look at. Um... Also, before we go, one more thing I want to do is just see where we, we trade at. Right now, we in a premium. If you just look at my fib, you can see we above the 50%, right? So we in a premium. Going down to the daily chart. I'm going to take off the fib right quick. As you can see, we got a fib value gap down here on the daily. Right? And this is how I usually will leave my chart after I finish doing my markup. I don't really want too much stuff on here confusing me. Um, it's either going to take out this high and come down toward this low, um, possibly lower down in the head, or to take out this low and then run for the high, or come down here into this gap and then run for the high. We just got to wait and see, right? But we just always want to have this stuff marked off just so we could be prepared and make sure we understand the levels that the market is touching for when, you know what I'm saying, news come out or price start to get a little volatile. So this is all we're going to do for, for, for NAS 100. I'm going to go down to the four hour and the one hour just to make sure I ain't missing nothing on the smaller time frames. Um, I do like this previous week low down here having these equal lows or the previous month low. Um, but as far as that, I ain't really seeing nothing else that I need to look at. So we're going to go over to US 30 and do the same thing. Clear my whole chart because I was trading it. Um, Like I said, we start off on the monthly and do the same thing. Now, now, I will usually go and do SPX as well, but we're not going to do that today um, just because I don't be trading it. And US 30 and NAS 100 really the only two I need to see. So we're going to go ahead. And even though though that's not really the low in that range, we're going to do the same thing previous month low and previous month high. Just so we can know which, which levels the market is touching when they get there, right? We always want to be prepared. We're going to go down to the weekly and do the same thing. Like I said, clean up the chart as you go down the smaller time frames just so it could look a little bit better for you. So then we got that. We're going to go to the previous week high, previous week low. Like I said, we don't want too much on the chart. 
um that's the pre no nah, it's the previous week low my bad previous week low previous month high i mean previous week high my bad i ain't did no video in a in a minute so i'm kind of like gotta get back in the swing so previous week high. all right now we're gonna go down to the daily and look at the daily and see if it's anything we want to see and then down here, I'm going to put sale side liquidity just because this is an important low right here. And if price was to run down there, I want to make sure we understand why it's going there. All right. So this is all we really need right here for US 30. Um, There is a fair value gap right here on the daily going toward the downside. So we're going to mark that off as well. And looking back at both, you can see we got the markup for NAS 100. We got the markup for US 30. Now, all we do at this point is just wait um, till 10 o'clock to see what happened. Um, going to, I'm going to do a markup on gold as well just to stay ahead in case we do see something on gold we could take because I do trade gold as well. But I'm going to do a fresh chart markup on this too. Um, as you can see, we got this previous month high. And gold really my favorite pair out of all of them, to be honest with you. Gold be doing what it need to do. Previous month low. Previous month high. Uh, We're going to go to the weekly. Clean this up a little bit. Um, all right, now do the same thing for the weekly. Previous week high. We gonna do the same thing for the previous week low. And as you can see, we already done ran the previous week low on gold. So looking at gold, you can see we already ran the previous week low. So I'm gonna still extend this line out a little bit. I don't, I don't need it that far. Just leave it like right here. I don't really even need these all the way over there. Uh, leave it like right here. All right, so we got that. Now we go down to the daily, and we're just trying to see what price is doing. Um. Looking at gold, you can see that we did come up here and take out this liquidity right here, right? This was our buy side liquidity. We came up here and ran this, and we started pushing toward the downside, right? So I'm expecting for them to try to trade toward this level right here, which is around like 22.70 something. Um, come down there, but looking at price, you can see. Right now, we below the 50%. So, I mean, we in a discount. And in order for price to continue to go down, I would like to see them run some type of high up here. Um, possibly tapping into this. But we got to see how far the market pushed down today. Um, so, I'm going to take off the Fib right quick, and I'm going to just mark off the Fib value you got right here. And we're going to leave that. Now, look, this is a big tip for my people that be trading ICT. If you using a if you using fair value gaps, right? You want to make sure that you got your fair your fair value gap box or have you want to do your rectangle, right? Cuz I use a rectangle on trading view to to put my um fair value gap. You could go over here to the settings and then open up the settings and select style. You see how I say middle line? You always want to have this on your chart, right? For your boxes. Especially if you're doing fair value gaps because it lets you know the 50% of that gap. Anytime you're looking at fair value gaps, you always want to try to take your trade below the 50%, right? You want it to respect that 50%. So if you're looking for an entry point inside like a wide fair value gap, I would always say try to get in at the 50% of the gap so that you can put your stop loss a little bit higher than the gap. You get what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, put that's a little tip that I wanted to let y'all know. Put a little line in between your 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 fair value gaps because it's gonna let you know if price respecting that gap or not. So we did the same thing for gold, and I'm gonna just extend this out a little bit because this is gonna be our framework for the whole week, right? We're not just using this just for the day only. This is gonna be our framework for the week. These lines are gonna let us know what we need to do. And like I said, we already came up here and took out this liquidity, so I'm expecting them to run this one. Um, so we go down to the smaller time frames, as you can see. And you always want to pay attention because it's a chance that the market could not come up here right now. Um, it's a chance that it could just go straight down here today. Um, so we just want to make sure we paying attention to everything. As you can see, we got a fair value gap here. 
and you see our price respecting that 50 percent that's kind of what we like to see so i'm gonna go down to the smaller time frames and see what gold doing uh like i said i would like to see them push up a little bit higher into it and then at the same time it's a fair value gap on the hourly chart as well about right here so usually you will have to just choose which one you want to use i hope their price respect that level now the thing is when you start going down in smaller time frames you're gonna see a bunch of them right so usually what i do is i'll just leave it on whichever time frame i initially seen it on so if i seen it on the four hour i'll leave a fair value gap on the four hour now i know that it's a chance that we could push our way up into this because of this order block right here right and um looking at price you can see we did run a high right here before displacing toward the downside so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be bad for gold to continue to go to the downside but i'm expecting for them to not respect this gap right um but like i said i ain't in the guessing i'm gonna let the market play out and show me what they want to do right if we was to break below this low then i know we could get some type of trade because it'll form another setup right so um that's really all we needed to do for these pairs as far as right now like i said we're gonna leave most of this stuff on here for the whole week um just to keep ourselves ahead of the curve and then sometimes we'll adjust these things so if this trade set up play out and we and we win or whatever trade we take and we win i'll i'll usually like change some stuff on the chart during the week right because we don't want to just leave this here the whole entire week but these is like important levels that you can leave the previous month high previous uh month low previous week high previous week low right those levels that you could keep on the chart the whole week because price may come back to those levels and give you some type of opportunity right just because the level got topped one time don't mean it don't hold no weight so now we're gonna go back to nas 100 and see what they doing over here it don't really look like they trying to do too much um and like i said when it come to nasdaq i like to trade this over us 30 a lot of the time but sometimes us 30 do be giving clean moves so you really just gotta pick your poison And looking at us 30 right you can see we got this little gap on a four hour that i am going to mark off and we're going to come over here with it let's just go through one more time see what price is doing i was on it xau euro usd i'll be trading euro usd as well but See, this was a trade on Euro USD that could have been took this when it came back down into this, right? Because I had this framework lined up for last week, but I ended up not taking the um, not seeing this right now. So it's cool though. This this happened during London session anyway, so I wasn't even up. So like I said, with But yeah, we just got to sit here and wait because I want y'all to be able to see exactly how I do this step by step. Um, I may get back into doing live trading on my on my on my second channel. I don't know. I got to really figure out a schedule for that. But for now, we're going to try doing our videos like this. Move this over. All right, so we about to have some news drop in one minute, right? We got red for the news at 945. We about to see what they do. What I would like to see for them do, damn. What I would like for them to do is push down into this, push down into this gap. It wouldn't even be a bad thing if they was to push down into this gap real, this gap, like, real far. Then looking at NARS 100, you can see we got that same gap sort of on a one hour. But you can see we topped into it before, but we didn't ever come down to this 50%, right? So this would be a good trade if they was to come back down into this. Um, and we could possibly take this up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split our chart, right? 
We gonna come and put Nas 100 on this side. US 30 on the other side. I'm gonna make sure y'all can see it though. Um, as you can see. So for this side, we're gonna go Nas 100. And we just gonna wait and let them play out. And then usually when they get down to like me trying to actually get entries, I go down to the smaller time frames, right? Looking at the five minute, the one minute. And and US and and Nas 100 not really looking like too clean as far as like to take a trade on. I can see that they pushing over to this high right here, right? On the one hour. So I'm gonna mark this off. And see if they come and touch and come and touch this. I'm gonna mark this off as buy side for right now. That's gonna be our buy side liquidity, and we're gonna see if they run into it. I know overall I would want to be targeting, I will be looking at this high, but like I said, I do want to see some type of retracement back into that gap. So we was to run this high and give some type of displacement toward the downside. I would be taking this trade targeting the 50% of this gap. Um, same thing for US 30. You can see on US 30, if we go down to the smaller time frame, it looked like we got a bunch of equal lows right here. Right, so I would like to see that get ran. And then right before that happened, we did run this high up here. So as you can see, we ran this high, came and took out this one. And now we just want to see what they do off of here. Um, looking at the daily, you can see that on the daily, we end up pushing toward the upside, right? So what does this tell you? Let me get y'all a gem right quick for all my forex traders investors whoever whatever if you do anything with charts make sure you understand the daily candles and how they work right looking at looking at the daily candle on us 30 right now what happened we already pushed above the previous day high right what that lets you know that lets you know that the market is trying to go bullish right this already set us up good for the week because if we look at the weekly and looking at this weekly candle, this previous week, this previous weekly candle, I don't really like the look of it, right? But I do want to see them come up here and take out this previous week high. So going down to the smaller time frames, like I said, on the daily, you want to pay attention to this because the daily channel, the daily time frame gonna let you know a lot. Um, usually when we see stuff like this, we expect it for the market to continue to go higher, right? Like I said, we was in a discount. Right, if we if we pull our fear from here to here, we in a discount, we below the 50%. So we do want to see them come back up here and take out this um fair value gap before pushing down. So what are we trying to do right now? I'm gonna get y'all the size. On the daily time frame, what you're trying to do is look at where the price opened at. We open right here, right? We already pushed above the previous day high. So that let us know that the market might want to go bullish today. So all we need to do is try to get us a solid entry. Um, on the wick of this daily candle. So you see how this daily candle looking like it's bearish right now? It's going to do that. It's going to push down, make some type of wick, and then I could, I, I, I ain't 100% sure because this, the market could do whatever it want to do. But from my experience, I noticed that, and you could just like Google up or YouTube Power 3, you understand what I'm talking about. You basically want to be getting if you if you expecting the market to go bullish that day, you want to make sure you getting your buys inside this um, daily candles wick right. Meaning wherever they go below the price opening, you want to be inside buys on that wick right. Because if, if the market end up bullish today and price end up all the way up here or start pushing toward the upside, you want to make sure. That you got in at the lowest point that you could which would be inside the wick right so now we going down to the lower time frames to look and see what we got and like i said i'm gonna draw a fib just from this low to this high right quick just to see where we trading at um like i said we want to always be trying to get buys below the 50 percent so looking at this huge fair value gap right it's a chance that they could come all the way down um, below the 50% of this. So we don't really want to pay too much attention to that line right here on the fair value gap, but we want to use it to see if price start to close there on the higher time frames, right? So on the lower time frames, it could push lower than the 50% of this gap. But 
on the higher time frames that might respect it, right? So don't pay attention to the to the to the wicks. Pay attention to the body of the candles when they get to these levels that you're looking for. So I know I'm doing a lot of talking, but I'm trying to really let y'all get a little bit more of an in-depth look at how I do my trading, right? Usually I chop up the videos and post like an eight-minute video showing y'all what I'm doing. Um but it don't be like me showing y'all the whole exact process, right? Me sitting here and just watching the candlesticks do what they do. And I feel like this is the best way to learn. Because if you just sit here and just watch this price action, this don't this the way you're going to really get good at trading by watching price action. Um, Because price action tell you everything. So looking at US 30, right? Since I'm already expecting for them to go toward the downside, I could have took a sale... You know what I'm saying? Going down, but we ain't really see no displacement yet. And it's looking like they might try to give us something. Um, but like I said, us being doing us doing what we what we do, we know we want to get in below the fifty percent, right? Of this of this of this fair value gap. And also we wanna get in below the fifty percent of this fib. So I'm looking and thinking that they may come and fill this whole gap, right? Cause then They'll be pushing close toward the 70 on the Fed, which would be a, a, a nice discount for price to run higher. So we're going to wait and see what happens. Like I said, we got about nine minutes before 10 o'clock come. Now, mind you, the silver bullet do form at 10 o'clock, um, between 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, which is the setup that we're looking for. So if we get the silver bullet going toward the downside, we take that, right? And we'll just be trying to get whatever we can get. If we see it going toward the, the upside, then we know we got a trade that we can hold for a little bit um, and possibly get like a 100, 100 pin move off of. We're going to see what happens. Um, like I said, I'm watching both of these pairs at the same time. And when it do come down to me placing my trades, I'm going to be placing my trades on Hanko trade, right? I don't do my markups on Hanko trade because sometimes it be issues with the chart. Um, so I do all my markups on trade and view because trade and view save everything. But when I do place my trade, y'all gonna see me switch over to this platform to place my trade. So, Angle Trade is the broker I'm using to trade on. Trade and View is what I do my analysis on. So we about to see what happens. It's it's it's, it's nine fifty two, US thirty pushing down what we want to, and I'm gonna go over on Nas one hundred and go down to the fifteen minute time frame as well, just cause. Let me look at the daily chart for Nas 100 too. Yeah, so same thing for Nas 100. On the daily time frame, we end up pushing toward the upside already. And and look, and let me tell y'all something about Nas 100, right? Or just daily candles in general. It might be a situation where you arrive to the chart and you see that they already done pushed above the previous day high, right? You're going to look and say, oh, they already done moved toward the upside. Now they got to go down, right? Yeah, it's a chance that they go that they go down because we want to see them go down. But the thing is, look at this wick right here. We want to see them push down and, and feel some of that wick right before continuing to move higher. Now, you, now Nas one hundred already gave you a sweet blueprint because it already took out the previous day high with a with a very bullish candle, right? So we already done done, done went up a lot today from from open. But now what you want to look and see is the same thing if they push below the the open. That's your opportunity to go long, right? And where can we target when we get our opportunity to go long? We can target the high of the day, right? Uh, we could target this buy side right here that, that lines right up with that fair value gap, even though I expect them to push through it and trade up here. Anything below the open is a golden opportunity for us to get a buy, right? So same thing on US 30 is the same thing we're doing on Oz 100. Um, or any pay that you're looking at, you always want to pay attention to the daily. The daily going to literally give you the cheat code on what you need to be doing for the day. Any pay you go on, if you just pay attention to the daily, it's going to tell you what you need to do. So we on you, we um still waiting right now. We got about five minutes left until 10 o'clock come. But like I said, I ain't going to sit here rambling the whole time, but I am going to sit here and let y'all watch these candlesticks play. I'm going to let y'all watch price action. Like Everything I'm saying, we're going to see if it come to, come to fruition because... Like I said, Monday is like one of those days where it's like the opening of the week. So you're really not trying to go too crazy on a Monday. But Mondays are easy, are like easy trade days. I'm not going to lie. Usually for me, it's like Monday, 
Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Those usually like the days where I could easily, you know what I'm saying? Like every day I really get on the charts and I, I and I catch a trade. It's just it just, it's just depend on what pair it is. Sometimes I trade Euro USD, go for a 20 pit move. Some, most of the time when I'm on US 30 dollars 100, I'm trying to get a hundred, a hundred points um or more. But sometimes I gotta switch up the pair depending on what the market doing. I might gotta go to go, might gotta go to Euro USD. Um and yeah, we we about to see what go about to do as well. Go top down into here. Trying to see what they do. I like the way they ran that low already. We got Nas 100. We'll go back over to US 30. And the reason I'm doing this on Nas, because I want to show y'all this. But like, this like the easiest trade setup that you could get. And a lot of people don't really understand it like that. So this is why I come on here and do this, because I want y'all to be able to see. And I'm going to put Nas 100 on this side, just because it's the pair that I'm looking at the least right now. Cause I ain't really liking the price action on this, but the price action on US 30 is way cleaner. So right now, anyway, for, for the moment. And like I said, at 10 o'clock, they're gonna show us something and show us what they want to do. So we just waiting for the market to tip his hand to us. We're not trying to be in the market catching every single point that they give, right? Cause like I said, from experience, I could have sold up here. Right? I could have sold as soon as this candle closed. That let me know that we wanted to go down, right? But discipline, I ain't gonna do that. Um and, uh, and it's not a good way to teach, so we're just going to let the market do what it do, and I'm going to actually show y'all how I can sell bullet. Now, last thing I want y'all to do before we get into that little hour that we're trying to actually look for a trade is you're going to grab you a trend line. I mean, not a trend line, but a vertical line, and we're going to place it at 10 o'clock, and we're going to place one at 11 o'clock. And let me tell you why we do this, because this let us know this is our window. In no circumstances should we be entering a trade before this time, Right? And we're going to do the same thing for, for, for Nas 100. Line at 10 o'clock, line at 11. This our, is this our time frame to get a trade. We got one hour to look for something, right? We go down to the smaller time frames, and this is our window. This is literally your window right here. If you take a trade outside of this window and you lose, that's your problem, right? Because you shouldn't have been in the trade anyway. So this is how I keep myself disciplined and knowing like, all right, now nah, it's not time yet. No matter what I'm seeing on the chart, it's not time yet. If if my trade going to play out, well, I'm going to see something. It's going to happen in this time frame, 10 to 11, right? So now all we doing is just waiting and we just want to see what the market gives us. Um, and like I said, we anticipate and buys. We want to see the market go long. So all we doing is being patient right here. Like I said, a sale opportunity might show up, but... It depends on what the sale opportunity look like that will let us know whether or not we will want to even take that, right? Um. So right now we just chilling. Like I said, we got about two minutes until ten o'clock for them, and they leaving. They leaving a gap on on Nas one hundred, um, right here. But like I said, when it come to the silver bullet. I usually like to see the first fair value you got that get formed after 10 o'clock, right? So if it's a fair value you got formed between 10 o'clock, I usually don't like to take it. I like to see one that formed after 10 o'clock. In this window right here, nothing that formed before 10 o'clock, some that formed in here, right? So even if this fair value got was to come and get touched, I probably wouldn't even look for that for a move because I already know they're going to form something between 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, right? A lot of people get confused with that. They are just into this into this fair value gap right here um, at 10 o'clock, right? Say 10 o'clock, they push back up into it, which you could. Sometimes I have done this and it, and it has played out, but it has been times where I lost a trade too, and then they end up forming another fair value gap, which was the actual silver bullet, right? So I don't know. It's, it's tricky. You just got to be able to look at the charts and identify if that's what you want to do. Yeah, I'm getting ready to send out this trade though. It's 10 o'clock right now, as y'all can see. Um, you see how they push it up into this fair value gap right here? That ain't what I'm going to use to get my trade. And I don't even like, I don't like how they done pushed up and filled this whole fair value gap like that, right? But at the same time, we got to wait. We're going to wait till this five-minute candle close and see how they close, right? Because as long as they close below the 50%, then it's like, then it's a chance that we could, we could possibly take this, right? But like I said, we want to go long anyway. So this might be a trade where it's like it happened in the PM session. 
we might actually get the baths during the PM session, but during New York session, we might actually just be bearish, right? So we're going to see what happens. Let's see what this five minute fair value you got right here look like. Let's see how we close on it. This could be a potential short. Um, Let's see. Let's see. How many pips are we risking? About 50. 50 points to get. 125 right at the top of that gap. This might be a trade worth taking. Let's see how the five minute kind of do close though. Um, and then they might give us something as well. I'm actually liking the close on that on the one minute. And we can actually have our stop loss right here. So a 30 point stop. Yeah, I'm gonna take this. So, like I said. Almost placed a bad bro. I'd have been sick. We're gonna go in with a 10 lot. On Nas. I'm saying my order be in place. Hold on. Sometimes it be tripping. Let's try it again. Let's see where we at. 615. I gotta get him a chance to come back a little bit though, because that, that stopped too wide for me. About a 50 pip stop. All right. I don't place the wrong trade. I'm sick. I'm thinking I'm on dollars 100. My bad, y'all. Yeah. Hold on. All right, so we in Nas right now. I'm going to send this out to the group right quick. I'm going to put my stop loss on this. I want to make sure I get this trade out to him, though. Sell US 30 at So we good. We in this. Send out the trade to them. Uh, let me make sure I got them the right. 50 pips. Stop. 150. All right. All right. We, I sent this out to the group. Uh... Like I said, we just took this trade right here. Let me make sure that all the numbers make sense on all the brokers. So, Nas 100. Yeah, we good. I put it on the screen. So I sent out the signal to, to the group chat. We got the Nas 100 sale. Like I said, we trying to we trying to take it down here, four hundred pips. So I sent them the trade out around six twenty, sixteen. I mean eighteen, six twenty. Uh, take profit. It's gonna be eighteen five twenty. So it'll be a hundred pip move down into this gap. If this trade was to play out right here, our stop is up here. And we just gonna see if we can ride down. And like I said, usually when you want a daily candle. You're not trying to you're not trying to be doing this right, but the reason that we can do this is why, is because we understand price action and from experience, I know that. All right, we had this little fair value gap that formed before ten o'clock, right? Usually, like I said, I wouldn't take that, but then we go down to the smaller time frame, we could see, on the one minute they respected that that fifty percent of that gap, right? And why and why would we be even looking for sales? Why is this a good trade opportunity? Because the market need to come down here into a discount, right? This is our discount range right here. Everything inside this fair value gap. We need to go down there. 
right? We getting 100 points right here at the opening of this fair value gap. So it only makes sense for us to take this trade and go down to the gap. In any other scenario, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shorting on a day I'm trying to go bullish on. But from experience, I know, all right, we could take this trade down to this gap. The market gonna push down into that gap, right? And then they probably give some type of bullish fair value gap down in here somewhere. Once price settles itself, make a little bit of market structure, right? We get some type of bullish market structure shift down in here if we is to go long. But we know for sure that it gotta come down here into this gap to even give us any opportunity to go long, right? Um, and it yeah, like I said, when I'm speaking in this, I'm speaking in terms of how we trade so the market could do whatever it want it could spike right now and go straight to the upside and then we just take a l that's just part of the game but like i said we took a chance getting into this trade going down to this gap because we know they gotta fill this gap going down there right um and this will be a quick little scout move like i said i'll stop above the high up here we don't really want to see it go no higher than that and if it do then we just take the trade and, and call it a l but I got faith in it. We about to see what happened. Let's look at the hourly chart right quick. And since we in this trade on, on, on Nas, we don't really need to have US 30 chart open. Looking at the hourly chart, you can see they didn't they didn't push above the previous hour or below it. So we just waiting to see what they do on that. We about to see what happened. Let me know in the comment section if y'all enjoying this Forex content. If y'all want me to post more content more often. Like, let me know if y'all want me to start doing this a couple times during the week where I just sit here and do the whole chart, breakdown, do the live trading, um, show y'all what I'm doing, all in like one one hour long video. 45 minute hour long video, no cuts, just straight, get on the charts, doing my markup. Showing y'all what I'm doing into the trade. Oh, I forgot to put my stop loss. I'm tripping. Um, hold on. This is the thing about recording. This is why sometimes I don't be doing videos like that. It's because where I get in at uh six fifty, so I could go. I don't even gotta go that go that far. I could go eighteen because I just need a hundred. Eighteen five fifty. Pay me. All right, so we have $1,000 right now in this trade, as you can see, $1,200, $1,300. We better just wait for the market to go ahead and do what we wanted to do. Like I said, we got a low right here. We're going to pay attention to this. This is our sales side for now on a one-minute. On one it ain't really that important, but we got to mark this all just to, just, to, just to be safe and make sure we keeping our um, – make sure we stay ahead, stay ahead of the game, so. Price pushing down now. So we want to see. Let's see what happened. Up 1300 In a second, we should get some type of momentum and go toward the downside. It should be an easy 100-point move. As you can see, like I said, I send these trades out to my Discord a lot. Um, Whenever I catch these moves, I'm sending it to the Discord first. Sometimes I'll send it to the Discord before I'm even in the trade because I want them to get the best price. You know what I'm saying? Um, the best entry that they can. So some it's it's a little bit tricky doing this live, trading myself and sending out the trade to the Discord because it's a lot of typing, bro. Price be moving too fast sometimes. Like I wish we could have got in up here, we would have had a way better entry. But it's still a fifty. It still was only a fifty pip stop loss, and we could easily uh that that's that's a good one or two. So it was worth it. But we could have had a way tighter stop if we had just entered it right here at the 50%. That's why I'm talking about, that 50% of that gap. If you enter the 50%, you never in the wrong situation, right? Because you got the best entry that you could get being realistic with yourself. You know what I'm saying? So let's see what happened. Though. We just took out this sales side liquidity. Now I want to see how we how we trade off of this. If we, let's see what we up. We have about 2,400 right now and the trade. Was up a little bit more. Should have been like 3,000. But we ain't we wasn't even looking at it at the time. But we have 2500 We're gonna let the trade continue to do what it do. And also, now we might see that that actual silver bullet trade is forming. Um, because why? 
Safe answers we leave in fair value. You got right here. This your silver bullet right here. This your silver bullet right here. We took out this high. We took out this high. Took out this low to sell side, and we left a fair value gap right here. Now we're gonna see if we res if we respect this fair value gap and make another low. If we make another low, our start our take profit should get hit pretty easily. So let's see what happened, y'all. Like I said, since I had placed my entry a little bit, I tried to place my trade on on, on Hanko and it and it froze. I guess I had to refresh the page, but I ended up getting a better entry. Cause it was because price was lagging a little bit so like i said we still have about two thousand right now trying to see what this gap do see how this gap play out we better see what happened like i said we want to see them push down toward the downside and touch this touch this gap look at the 50 percent look at the 50 percent bro i'm giving y'all gems right if y'all don't subscribe to the channel right now if you in an investing, if you in a forex trading, if you in a making money, bro, you need to subscribe to the channel because that's all we do over here. And if you really want to lock in, you need to get into the Discord, bro. Like I said, I'm letting y'all get into the Discord for a one-time fee right now for the rest of the week. So if y'all, like I said, I don't do this live trading and stuff every day. But when I can, I try to. So as you can see, look at the 50% of that gap. It was getting respected. And I still want to see it get respected. So we're going to see how they trade off of this. Um, especially since they done pushed down and took out this, this low of this candle. Always look at that. When y'all looking at price, look at look at the low and the high of the previous candle that of the previous candle. Did they take it out? As you can see right here, we, we did take out the, the previous high as well. But that was just because we had to go up. We took out the low of that candle as well. Now we want to see what this candle do. This candle will either push up, take out the high. Then it'll probably be a little bit weird for us because in that scenario, we never know what could happen. The market could see to go up, but we about to just see and be patient. And the reason I'm saying that is because looking at the way they took out this low on the sales side, they didn't really displace, which is what we want to see was like an explosive move toward the downside. We didn't see that. Um, Right here, it's looking like they're trying to go up. So they might use this gap as an inverted fair value gap and continue to push toward the upside, but Let's just see what happened. Like I said, we on trip. We just stay in, we stay in our trade, trust our analysis. The market gonna move back and forth. We just wanna make sure we stand on point with the with the with the draws on liquidity and stuff like that, right? Uh, even up here, this high that we took, I mean that we um see up here, we wanna make sure this marked off as our buy side, cause this is this is buy side right now inside this range we in, right? So let me lock this so it don't move. And we just wait and see what happens. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna open up US 30 as well. Let's see what US 30 doing. Like I said, I want to see this still push toward the downside. I was 100. Try not to get too too cut up, caught up in the BS that's going on. Like I said, they could come back up here and retest this 50 percent of this gap again. We just waiting and seeing, seeing what happens. We don't get nervous or nothing. Stay in the trade. Let it do what it do. The market gonna play with you. It's just part of trade. What we what we at? We we mine is eight hundred right now. After just being up three k, that'll that'll make a lot of people worried. You get what I'm saying? Cause you see a trade going your way and then it go against you. But we stay in it. And like I said, I didn't really like the way they came down here to this low. They took it out, but they didn't displace below it. You know what I'm saying? So in that situation, we really would have been, our silver bullet would have been. I don't even like when they, when they form so many fair value gaps in the same hour, but yeah, like we could have, uh, the best scenario for this move would have been entering up here inside this gap at the 50% and then taking out the low, right? That was a silver bullet right there, taking out that low, but you can see right here we forming another gap. We did form another gap right here after price displaced toward the upside. Uh, and in that scenario, let's look at the daily. Let's 
Let's look at the full hourly. The hourly. Yeah, I still want I still want to see that get taken out, so we not tripping. We just gonna stay and do what we do, stay in the trade, and let the market play out. Like I said, it's a potential that the market could be going toward the upside based off, you know what I'm saying, this gap right here. But we're gonna see what happened. Look at the five minute. Yeah, that five minute looking bullish, I'm not gonna lie. Let's let's see what happened. Let's wait and see. Go down to the 15. Like I said, what I do is I usually switch between each time frame and just start looking. Because I, I I know a lot of the times we go down to the smaller time frame and it could conflict a higher time frame bias, right? Because we we always expecting to get into a trade on a lower time frame, but then we use and then we ignore our, our whole higher time frame analysis, right? And you don't really want to do that because the smaller time frame don't mind as much as that higher time frame do so like i said my bias on this is still toward the downside no matter what they do we'll be looking for buy opportunities down in here like i said it might not happen today i was expecting for them to trade toward that but we're gonna see what happened either trade gonna hit stop loss or we gonna or we gonna hit tp so just a waiting game i don't hop in trades hop out of them and switch my bias last second I don't do that. I either let it hit my stop or let it hit my take profit. Because the only way the trade did not play out is if my stop loss get hit, right? I can't say that the market is about to just shoot toward the upside from right here. Because I don't know, right? All I could do is just stick to what I stick to my trading plan and let the market play out. If I start doing too much, um, second guessing myself, getting into the chart, um, I'm in a trade, then one second I'm switching the trade. It's just gonna mess up your consistency, right? So even if I was to take a loss right here, the next trade, we catch 100 points on it. We made our money back plus an extra 50, right? If I win this trade, we up 100 for the week. You know what I'm saying? So about to wait and see what happens. Like I said, we got this gap here, but I'm, I'm going to wait and see what they do at this gap, if they respect it or if they blow through it. Right now, you can see we back up a little bit, 300, 400. Like I said, I ain't being stupid. I can see that that I can see that gap clear as day. I can see that they ran the low. I can see they displaced. I can see they probably want to go back up here toward this level right here. But like I said, I'm gonna stick to my trade. I'm gonna let let it either hit stop or or, or take profit. Let me check the call. Let me check the Discord right quick. So we just waiting. Same thing every day. Let's see what happened though. This be the only part about trading is saying here waiting for this stuff to happen because it get boring after a minute. Just saying here watching these candlesticks. You know what I'm saying? But it's all good though. Let's see what we get. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this because they had these equal lows right here on the one minute on Nas 100. Equal lows right here. They got ran. Price ran down into that gap. So it's, it's, it's looking a little weird. But like I said, this is a one minute time frame. And I ain't about to really pay this too much attention. Because I know how the market finesse, bro. Like, yeah, we got this little gap here. But we already ran into this. We already ran this gap here. It really do not make sense for them to to come back up here right now, in my opinion. But we're going to see how they, how they respect. This 50% of this gap right quick. I want to see how they close on it. We got about 20 seconds left on it. About to see what happens. What time was this low right here? 9.56. Right before 10 o'clock. We 
did close above the 50%. So let's see what happened with this next candle. If we get if we get to coming up here, then we got a question to set up. Then they'll be today will be breaking the high again. And we don't really want to see that. So we're gonna see what happens. See if they trade through this gap and maybe use it as an inverted. About 30 seconds left on that candle. I'm just going to be patient. We've been recording for like 52 minutes so far. It's usually how much time I spend on the charts anyway, like an hour and 30. I usually get up at like 9, 9.15, hop on the charts around 9.30. Get off at 11 even. So 11 o'clock, calling it a day. How much we, if we take a loss or we take a win, we on to the next day. But... I'm trying to do these type videos because I feel like, for me, if I would have had somebody doing this right here, like sitting through the whole trading session, well, not the whole trading because I ain't going to be on here through the whole New York, but I'm only for a good hour, right? That's our trading window, 11, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So a good hour and 30 minutes, that's enough to really get what you need to get. If you ain't found your trade in that amount of time, then you probably should just leave it alone. But as you can see, Price trading off that fifty percent. I'm thinking this might have been a, this might be what that silver bullet is, but I'm a, I'm gonna trust this one up here. Let's see what happened. I'm tired, bro. Like getting up this early in the morning is not for me, yo. And I feel like you. I be using a lot of energy when I be getting up this early, like. Talking for all this time straight, bro. It's like crazy. But we about to see what happened very soon. It's getting close to 10 30, so I'm expecting something to happen in the next 30 minutes. Let's see. Let's take off this gap. I mean, take off that line. I don't be liking I had too much stuff on the chart, start confusing. Let me check that. Let me check the other time frames though. All right, so the four hour pushed all the way up there. Nine times out of ten, if the four hour pushed up there, they probably trying to reach for that buy side, right? Let's see. But on this hourly candle, we did push below. We did push below this low. So it's a possibility we could be all right. But I don't know. I ain't really liking that. That, that we taking out this high again. Well, let me look at US 30 right quick. US 30 consolidating and ain't really moving. It's probably waiting for Nas to do something. Or SPX. Let's see. Took out this high again up here. Right now, we in the consolidation. That's all we doing. We consolidating right now. It's going to give some type of spike toward the upside or downside. And, and even if they was to come up here, stop us out right and go up. If they take out this level up here at 18,740, I'd be looking for it. And then look, you see how we came up here and took out this high, but we didn't close. We didn't close above it. That's a good sign, right? And like I said, this is one minute price action, so we're not trying to pay too much attention to it. This 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 original gap we got right here is on a five minute time frame, so it'll hold a little more weight. So that's why I'm still sticking to this trade and I switch in my bias, right? Just because I see some bullish candles don't mean I'm about to switch the switch the buying. That ain't how this works. Especially when you got your analysis and your and your framework set up on the higher time frame, and then you go down to the one minute and the five minute. Never switch up your higher time frame bias for some one minute candles, bro. I'm telling you. Gold was an easy trade though. I knew that was going to twenty three forty because 
this morning it was trading around like right here and they had already took out this low they took out this low and they had to go back up into a premium which if you look at the 30 minute oh, let me show you the hourly you see the hourly we had this gap right here or the block and we was in a discount so we needed to push back up in here so 2340 was easy that was an easy 100 pit move but I ain't take it cause I ain't really like the price action that was forming right here. Even though it was it was kind of clean, I like I like stuff that's way cleaner than that. You know what I'm saying? Especially and it was like a little gap down here right here, below all this. You know I'm saying even though we had one right here too, and it tied right into an order block as well. And, but stick the knives for now. Like I said, I only like to try to usually be in one trade at a time. Sticking to that. These bullish fair value gaps going toward the upside on Nas kind of kind of throwing me off. But we're gonna see what happens. Let's see what Dollar doing. Dollar came back down here to this um to this gap that was on here. That formed on Wednesday. Came back to that gap. All right, let's see what happened. Yeah, it was looking like it's trying to push down. What we wanted to push down to, though, so that's that's a good thing. We just filled this gap 100%. So let's see if we push through it. I really like how these candles was 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 wasn't respecting these um this high up here, even though it's gonna get ran through later. Like I said, we wanted to see them do like a, a explosive move to the downside, and then we'd be looking at. You know what I'm saying? Take all this out up here after that. But for now, we going, I'm, I'm expecting down still. So we just going to hold and see what happens. On the charts for about an hour and four minutes now. We about to see some of this video. I might chop down though, cause it's an hour long. I gotta edit it too, so I might chop it down some. Chop some of the lower, some some parts out of it. We gonna see. Chop some of the boring parts out. But it's ten thirty though. We about to see if we could get this push down like we need. If we go down to this low, it's gonna run through it. If we go down to this low, it's gonna run through it. About to run through it though, and this is why I say never switch your bias mid trade, bro. Because you want a smaller time frame, looking at some 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 stuff that you don't even need to be looking at. Even though I'm looking at the charts the whole time, I'm like, dang, bro, it might go against us. Like this one minute fair value you got might go up here and take out this high, right? Because this week we had our stop loss at. So if we would have came up here and took out this high, we'd have lost, right? Um, and even if they would have continued to go down after that, we'd have lost the trade. But I was looking at the five minute fair value gap and using that one as my framework. So anything that was happening on a lower time frame beside going down, I wasn't even paying attention to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care about none of this stuff that's going on right here. I'm not switching the bias to bullish until we come down into this gap, no matter what. Cause that's just how that's just how the market work. Um, we gotta go down to that gap. We gotta go down to it. No matter what we want to see the market do, we gotta go down to this gap before it do any buying. So this is what we doing, sticking this trade out. Uh, it's looking like it's going in our direction, up about a thousand dollars in the trade. Um, we about to see what happens. About to see what happens. We pushing down now. Up 2500 again. So we looking nice. Like I said, we want to see them push below this and just continue to go down. We don't even really need this in here no more because we already done blew through it. So it's not, it's, it ain't get respected. So it's useless to us now. 
Um, I'm gonna just clean up the chart a little bit. I'm gonna leave this here though, just so y'all can see. And now we want to see them just blow through it and take out this low. So soon we should be at a one on one. We up three thousand right now. Thirty five hundred. Like I said, if y'all looking for a good broker, I mean, can't go trade a great broker. They pay out fast. Deposits never had no problem with it. I've been using Hanko for years, though, even before they got taken off a of MetaTrader 4. So if y'all looking for a reliable broker, Hanko Trade definitely reliable. Like, I never had no issues with them out of all the years I was using. So if y'all want to try out a broker, link in the description for Hanko Trade down below. As you can see, we pushing down now. Only thing I wish that that you know what I'm saying with these with the markets is that every broker would have the same numbers. Cause sometimes it's very hard to do signals or just trade in general when you're looking at one platform and the numbers say this, and then you go to your platform and the numbers is not even the same. Like for for Nas 100 on Trading View, my it's saying that it's like 10 points lower than what it is on Hanko Trade, right? So I ended up putting my stop loss in the wrong position on this exact trade, right? I put my stop loss in the wrong position, calculating the numbers for trading view, and I ended up getting stopped out on this exact trade right here for like $1,000 or something, right? So I had to pull a trade again uh, and readjust the, the numbers to what it's supposed to actually be at. So always, if you trade on a broker and you're using trading view for your analysis, always go to your broker and make sure you put in your stop loss in the same exact candle that you putting it on on trading view because that that just caused me a thousand dollars you know what i'm saying but even though we back up it that could have been a, a mistake i didn't make had i you know what i'm saying not been rushing but it's all good we about to make 10 times that so we push down here be a ten thousand dollar trade let's see what happened like i said i like the way that we uh push through this little fair value gap. That one minute fair value gap was the only thing that was quest that, that had me questioning the setup right here. That one minute fair value gap. But we just stuck to our analysis and we, ain't, we didn't bend, break, or fold because something else happened that we didn't think was supposed to happen, right? We just let our trade play out either hit stop or hit take profit. So now, like I said, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be a problem if price was to push back up to this gap and trade off of it, even if it just touched the bottom of it, trade off of it and come down. But we should get some type of momentum here soon to push us down to that gap. Because I know during the PM session is when they're going to want to do that bullish move, right? So as long as we could just catch this move down here, we don't even need to worry about that bullish move unless you was being greedy, right? Some people might get greedy and want to catch the whole move, um, catch both moves, right? So they might want to catch this this sale down into this gap and then they'll catch the buy. But that ain't how I trade. Um, sometimes I do that if I'm trying to do like account flips or something. But other than that, I usually just get that one move. If I catch 100 points, I ain't about to give them back 50, 50 pips, you know what I'm saying, on my next trade. Like, if I lose that next trade, say my entry ain't right for the for the buy, and I lose money that I just made that same day, it's like, it'd be pointless. So, I just take my win and get on with the day. We got five trading days out of the week. We don't got to catch every single candlestick. Make our money and get off the charts. We about to see right now we have about 2500 like i said mostly been up in this trade so i was like 3500 and i'm expecting some type of very bullish move down here to this gap soon uh at 100 pit move it should take a couple candles and it's getting close to 11 o'clock so i know they want to make that move before this before this 10 hour candle close so we should see some type of price action pushing us down there soon yeah, like I said, if y'all like these type of videos, bruv, you in investing, Forex, trading, stocks, crypto. The stuff that I'm doing on here, the way I'm trading, the way I'm charting up, it works across all markets. My bad. I just smacked the mess out the microphone. But nah, the way I'm trading, it work on all, it work on all markets. So you could really um use this to make money in any market. And it's very simple stuff for real. Like I said, I trade ICT concepts. Um, and that's all I've been trading for like the past five years, honestly. So 
it definitely worked. I definitely seen an improvement in my trade since I've been trading these this style. Um, I wouldn't go back to what I used to do for nothing. You couldn't pay me to go back to what I used to do. Support and resistance and all that, all that stuff. I mean, it's traders that make money doing trading that way, but I feel like the best trader is gonna be able to like read price action perfectly. I mean, you never could be perfect with this, but you're gonna be able to read price action to a point where you could consistently make money. And you don't gotta sit here and have too much stuff on the chart. Like y'all see my chart. Even if we go down from the daily all the way down, it's not barely, it's not really much on here. It's not a bunch of support and resistance lines. It's none of that. I got key levels I'm looking at, right? Um, and yeah, this style of trade is just just way better to me because you're able to actually understand what's going on in the market, right? But being able to read price action, that's gonna be your biggest skill. So like I said, I wanted to see them push back into this gap. That's why I put it back on here. Uh, we come back up to this gap and then just trade down off of it. We about to see what happened. Liquidity being built up down here, so they gonna run it soon. We just gotta be patient. And like I said, sometimes I take the trade at the one-on-one. You know, if I get tired of holding the trade for too long, or if I'm comfortable with the profits. But I do send out a 100 pip take profit to my Discord just because, you know, they be doing challenges. Uh, they probably not trading as much capital as I'm trading. So for them, I want to make sure they able to, when I, when I do send out trades, it's trades that get big moves. You know what I'm saying? So they can make a lot of money on their challenge or um, gain a good percentage on their live account to be able to, you know what I'm saying, take a couple losses if that was the case. So I'm never, I'm never, I'm never going for like small targets, like 30 points. I'm always like 50 or higher. 50 to 100 points early trade because I usually got about a 50 pip stop loss, right? Usually 30 to 50 pip stop. I mean, I'm usually always going for like a one to one. one to, I mean, a one to two at least. One to one minimum. If the trade ain't looking how I wanted to look and I'm at a one to one, I close partials. You know what I'm saying? And I usually tell them in the Discord to close partials at a one to one. So once we get up 50 pips, I send out a message in the Discord. We up 50 pips. If you want to secure some profits, go ahead. I'm confident in this setup though. Let me see what they signed in the Discord anyway. I ain't even tapped in with them. We about to see what happened. Like I said, they gotta, they should push down into this gap before this, before this ten hour candle close. It should, it should either push down into it before the ten hour candle close, or push close to it, and then the eleven o'clock candle will push down in it. But we should see like an explosive move right here in these, in these last fifteen minutes, because once they enter that PM session, that's when you're gonna actually see them actually want to go the way that they trying to go for the day. So today it should be a bullish, it should be a bullish day, right? Um. But like I said, we want to see them go down into that gap first. So the the buy might happen during the PM session at two o'clock, three o'clock. You know what I'm saying? But we about to see. We up about four thousand dollars in the trade right now. Like I said, anything over five thousand, it's a good day for me. But I'm gonna see if we can get this whole this whole hundred points because that'd be nice. Price moving. And it's 1045 right now. Watch how this watch how they watch how they explode toward the downside in a second though. I'm telling you, this this 10 hour candle usually the one that do it when it's a situation like this. Like they'll they'll go down to that to that inefficiency before eleven o'clock come, right? Because that silver bullet window is ten o'clock to eleven. So it gotta hit. It don't got to, but it should hit this gap down here before that eleven o'clock candle start. And like I said, this is our window. Remember, we put that we put the line from here to here. This is the only uh, place we could take a trade at between this line and this line. Anything out of it, you setting yourself up for a loss, right? And that's why we ain't even tripping off if we do end up buying for the day, right? Because guess what? That just set us up for the rest of the week. If they come down here and they take out. 
and, and they fill this gap and then they start going bullish the rest of the day, right? Tomorrow we know, all right, the rest of the week we could go and look for buys, right? Um, if that's the way they're going to go, if they're going to go up, because I'm thinking that they might go and try to push that 20,000 level, right? So if we end up going up to 20,000, we, we, after today, it'll let us know what we want to do for the rest of the week, basically. If we start going bullish and it ain't no fair value gap or no drawn liquidity update, we know that the rest of the week we should just be buying, right? So as you can see right now, we have $4,200 in this trade. Uh, almost close to 50 pips in profit. 4,000. We just had a, a nice little spike. But that ain't even, enough, that ain't even really when we want to see. We want to see something better than that. So we're going to just chill. Funny thing is, usually when I'm trading by myself, I don't even be talking for it. I just be sending the charts with my eyes glued to it. Just looking. Sometimes I be scrolling through my phone. But when it comes to trading, you, you definitely want to make sure you alert. You know what I'm saying? So usually I step outside and get some fresh air before I even get on the charts. You know what I'm saying? I know some people that meditate before they get on. They might read before they get on, but it's always good to do something else before you hop on the charts just so you can have a clear mind. And for me, that's like stepping outside for a second, getting some fresh air, and then I come back in and hop on the charts. I said, I'm trying to see them push down to this gap right quick. I want to do this on a video for y'all, even though I'm, I'm kind of comfortable with the profits for real, because I'm at a one-on-one -on -one already. I'm at almost 5,000. But I want to show y'all that what I'm doing on here is not fluke, and it's a reason behind everything I'm doing. Um, I let y'all know this, you know what I'm saying? When y'all coming to learn from me, y'all actually learning valid information. So like I said, we pushing down now. Uh, we about 5600 as you can see and it really ain't nothing it really ain't no reason for us to not hold this trade to this gap uh let me check and see what the price is let me see what the price is on um on this other broker right quick because i know a lot of my discord members be using different brokers so i'm trying to make sure everything the same we have 6200 in this trade a couple more points so now I'm gonna send out send out a message to the Discord. Let them know we have 50 points, 60 points for real, for real. Uh, 620. As y'all can see, price pushing down. We have 6600. Why am I just tripping for? Yeah, we have 7300. Seventy-five pips in profit. Secure partials. Seventy-five pips in profit, guys. You can see. Let's see if we can get the rest of this right quick. Like I said, I'm doing. I, I really would have closed already and took my took my my dub. But like I said, I want y'all to understand that what I'm doing and teaching y'all is not BS. And I really do this, and that we really do this in the Discord. You can ask anybody in the Discord. We we be really catching these moves. So we just let the trade play out. We don't really get too nervous. I be trying to keep everybody calm and stuff during the during the trade, just to let everybody know that. Cause sometimes they get nervous, right? They see trade start coming back up. After we just took out a drawing liquidity and they got nervous and probably closed up here. I know somebody in the, in the Discord and closed this trade up here thinking it was going to go long, right? Or they might have looked at this one minute fair value gap and tried to buy that one to play. So I'm hoping if you're in the Discord, you watch this whole video all the way through and gain some knowledge from it and you see why I trade how I trade and why I tell y'all not to close your trade out. Let it hit stop. Like if it's going to hit stop, it's going to hit stop. I got stopped out on accident on this trade and I pulled it again. Right, I could have been like, oh, all right, I lost a thousand dollars because I had my stop in the wrong place, but I don't even have to take a loss no more. I could have end ended the video and went about my day, right? And nobody would have never known what happened. But I ain't that ain't that, that ain't what I'm on. I'm trying to show y'all what I'm doing so y'all can make money too, and we really get some bread. So we up eighty five pips in the trade right now. Soon to be a hundred points. Like I said, I just want to touch the I just want to touch the opening of this gap. 
or ten thousand dollars, and then I'm done. But I'll still sit on here and let the trade hit the hit the gap for y'all though. But we up eight thousand. Couple more points and we be at ten thousand dollar day in one hour, literally. An hour and twenty minutes. It's crazy. But as you can see, we not we don't get worried about none of that. Cause why? We already know where the market trading to. It's trading to this gap. Ain't nothing right here for it to stop at. Besides that gap. Right? So we ain't even worried about price doing none of the stuff it's doing right now. It could come back up to here. And we'd still be expecting it to go down, right? If I was trading on some flip, account flipping stuff, I'd be scaling in every gap I see. Right? Um, until we get to this, to this, to this level. As soon as we get here, that's when you would really want to close out your trade. And that's a potential. We could get way more than 100 pips off this because this is a wide fair value gap. And the 50% is down here. So this could be a 200 pip move, right? $20,000 a day, but I'm not even going to take the chance. I just want to get in right here. I mean, get out right here. Go by my day. So it should happen in a second. Hopefully y'all learn something. We up $9,000 for the day. If y'all did, make sure y'all drop a like, bruh. If y'all want more videos like this, where I'm doing live trading, live Forex trading, live NAS 100, drop a like on the video. Let me get a 1,000 likes on this video, and I'll drop another banger like this where I sit on the charts for the whole time and let y'all see every candlestick. High move. No cuts. Straight to it. Let me know in the comment section down below if y'all want more of this. But as you can see, we up 8,500. Should be hitting 10,000 soon. I take profit should get hit in a second. We at five fifty. I take profit at five fifty. So about another ten pips and I'm out. That gap huge though. I ain't gonna lie. Another ten points and we up out of there. So let's see what happened. Great trade though. Great trade. As you can see. All my jank keep freezing for it, bruh. Hold on. That's why I be trading on the phone. I don't ever got really dip. Oh, I think my trade got closed out. Yeah, we got taken out. So as you can see, we uh it hit take profit on this broker. Um, then like I said, the numbers a little bit different. So as you can see, we end up hitting that hitting that trade though, making our little 10k. 32,000 is what this account is sitting at now. Uh, on the day, so we had a ten thousand dollar gain. Started at twenty two thousand, something like that. Twenty two thousand, twenty three thousand. So, hopefully, y'all enjoyed this video, man. Like I said, if y'all did, go ahead, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Y'all seen what happened? Y'all seen what played out? It's going to hundred percent go down into that gap. I don't need to sit on the charts no more. Um, we about, but I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it like a little another couple of minutes just cause the take profit I sent out to the Discord. I'm gonna let them know we have 90 pips. Up 90 pips. And we just need to get down to 520 right quick and then we call it a day. Call it a day. TP hit in the Discord. We hit TP. And like I said, if y'all want to get in the Discord, man, I usually charge. I had the price at $100 a month. Because we really getting people money in the Discord and people gaining all this. So if y'all want to get into the Discord, for the next week, I'm going to leave it at $99 for one-time fee. So, it say $99 per month right now, but when you go on the website, first link in the description, it'll say $99 one-time fee. You pay one time, you in, you ain't got to worry about no monthly payments or none of that. Um, And yeah, it's trade about to hit take profit. Like I said, the numbers on here, on, on trading view, it's 10 pips higher than where um the numbers is on the broker that I be sending out the signals based off of, right? Um, and as you can see, we about to top it to that gap. Top that gray line. We call it a day. Look how sweet this trade was, bruh. And look how we kept our composure the whole time. Did not worry about nothing going on. This how you make money, bro. You got to be calm and patient. But as you can see, man, like I said, the, the price is 10 points higher. So at 530, we actually did hit take profit. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Let me go ahead and check this other chain right quick. Hold on. Trying to log into my other broker right quick. One more little spike and we out of here. One more little spike and we out of here. 
Give me one little low. That TP hit 100 pips. 100 pips right here in front of y'all face. Live on Oz 100. Dissected each trade. Let's see. Let's see what US 30 end up doing though. US 30 end up pushing down too to the 50% of that gap. You see? But yeah. We're gonna go ahead and call it a day. I ain't no point in sitting on here for this other little point. Y'all see the trade end up playing out. Everybody in the chat probably already gonna close out the trade anyway, because TP got hit on the on the for us. But I'm gonna holler at y'all in my next video. Peace.